Hey, welcome back. I'm Sean Barr, and at Looking Point, we help IT organizations make decisions around collaboration, security, and networking. Today, we're talking about WebEx, how you can save time and improve your overall experience in WebEx, essentially making WebEx your best friend. I'll be right back. So if you're watching this video, we assume you already have a WebEx account. Now, WebEx essentially brings in audio and video participants into a conference room, allows you to share content, and also perform digital whiteboarding. The first place we're going to start is your general settings, and that's the settings that control your experience within WebEx. So let's get started. All right, so we've logged into the WebEx portal, and for this video, we assume that you already have a WebEx account, so we're logged in now. The first thing you're going to do is click on Preferences. You're going to be brought to the General tab. The General tab will show things like time zone, language, and region. Additionally, you can integrate other accounts such as Microsoft Office 365, Google, and Facebook into your WebEx account. The next thing we're going to do is click on My Personal Room. You'll notice at the top the personal room name. This is the name that participants will see when joining your room. Below that is the personal room link. This is a link you can send out to participants or people you would like to join your personal room. They would click the link, they could put in their first name, and they could click join to join the meeting and they would meet you in your personal room. Now you can type in whatever you'd like as long as it's not taken by your organization, a quick link that you can use. It could be your first name, first name, last name, as an example. In this example, we've just put it as WebEx. Below that is the host pen. The host pin is leveraged if you joined the meeting from a video endpoint. So if you walked into a room, you clicked join, if you had the join button, or if you joined the meeting uh, by typing the SIP URI, it would prompt you if you were the host, and then you could click yes, and you would enter your host pin, and that's the pin displayed here. The next section is automatic lock. Now, automatic lock automatically locks your personal room after a set period of time. The set period of time is controlled here in this setting, and it can be seen by checking the box and hitting the down arrow. And you can set it to automatically lock your room after five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, or 20 minutes. Now, this is great if you have maybe confidential information that you're sharing on a meeting, but for my purposes, typically, I like to leave it disabled because oftentimes when people join late, I don't notice that people are waiting and the room is locked. Then I get a text message, hey, I'm locked out of the meeting. I've got to go admit them. It's a bit of a distraction for the type of work and the, the way I use a meeting. So I would disable this feature, and then you won't have that issue of people being locked out of your personal room. Notifications. This is a notification that gets sent to your email if somebody just joined your room and maybe you said, hey, join my room and I'll join when you jump in. And that could be a way that you could be watching your email come in, you see that someone's in your personal room, and then you would just go into your personal room and meet them at that time. You can leave this checked or you can disable it if you don't think you would use that feature. Alternate host. There are a number of options you can use to control who can host a meeting on your behalf, and those settings are right below here. So choose one that works for you, and once done with all of these settings and you're happy with them, click Save. Once that's saved, we're gonna move over to audio and video. Now the first area is what call-in number would you like to present to people joining your WebEx meeting? And for our location, we're gonna select Los Angeles, and secondarily, we're gonna select Denver. Below that is the Call Me Numbers section you can enter in your office phone and your mobile phone. Once entered, you can elect whether to display one or both of these numbers when you join a WebEx. And the goal of this is to make it easier for you to have a callback from WebEx by just selecting numbers that you're commonly using. So typically it's your mobile phone and your desk phone. Below that section is the audio pen. Now the audio pen is different than the personal room pen. So what we recommend is setting them to be the same unless you're doing something from, from a security perspective that you want to differentiate those pens. But for ease of use and user clarity, having the same pen, whether it's audio and video type conference or you're leveraging your personal room, just makes it easier from an experience perspective. So we recommend setting them the same. Personal conferencing can be used 
if you want to have an audio only participant start the meeting. And so in order to do that, you're gonna to need to click on generate an account and it will generate an account for you to leverage. It will include your host access code and an attendee access code. You can provide this to participants for those audio only conferences. You can create up to two additional accounts for a total of three by clicking the generate an account button. This will generate an additional host code and attendee code for up to three accounts. Moving down, you have the video system section. And this is a simple way to join video systems, whether they're in the room or in your office. It gives you an easy way to select a friendly name for that room, and it will automatically call the SIP URI associated with that room to save you time when joining a meeting. Once you're happy with these settings, click Save. Now let's move over to scheduling. So in the scheduling section, you'll notice the first section is meeting type. Now this allows you to set the appropriate meeting type you would like to use when scheduling a WebEx. Additionally, you can have it generate an email reminder before the meeting starts. You can send a copy of the invitation to participants and there are some additional settings around sharing recordings, requiring an account to join, and also who can schedule meetings on behalf of your account. Those settings are all controlled here. And for me, I like to select the WebEx personal conference room for my default meeting, and I don't send an email reminder before the meeting. Once happy with these settings, we can click save and we're all done with our preferences. All right, so we went through the preferences on the WebEx portal. Now we're gonna go over scheduling a meeting and ways you can invite people leveraging WebEx. All right, to schedule a meeting using the WebEx productivity tools, we're gonna click on new appointment. Once we open a new appointment, we're gonna give it a title. And we are gonna add our personal room to the meeting. I'm going to invite participants. Additionally, I'm going to invite a meeting room. From here, I'm gonna click send and that's it. So I've now scheduled a meeting leveraging the WebEx productivity tools. All right, so now that we scheduled a meeting using the WebEx productivity tools, let's schedule a meeting without that, just using the at WebEx keyword. Now we're gonna schedule a meeting leveraging the at WebEx keyword, and we are not going to be leveraging the WebEx productivity tools. To do that, I will give the meeting a title. And I will invite some participants. What I'll do now to tell it I would like to set up a WebEx meeting is leverage the location field and put the at sign WebEx. Now this requires an integration with your email system to look for this keyword and automatically integrate and push that invitation to WebEx so that it adds all the information to your invite. So I'm gonna click send now. Now that we've scheduled our meeting with the at WebEx keyword, let's reopen the meeting to take a look at what was changed. Once you open it, you'll see that the at WebEx location is still included. Additionally, it has added all the WebEx information needed to join the meeting. So that's it. By adding the at WebEx keyword, it will automatically append the meeting information into the invite so everyone can join seamlessly. All right, so we covered the preferences and we covered scheduling a meeting. Now let's try joining that meeting from a mobile device. From your mobile device, you're gonna open your calendar. From there, open the meeting which you'd like to join. You're gonna notice that there is a red phone icon. Press the red phone icon and it's gonna bring up the WebEx meeting. After that, it's going to connect you to the meeting. Once connected, it's gonna prompt you to connect to your phone. It's gonna give you a call, answer the call, then WebEx will prompt you to go back to the meeting. Once there, join the meeting and video's working. Now that we've joined a WebEx from a mobile device, let's try joining from a room. Once you've scheduled the meeting leveraging the WebEx productivity tools, additionally, to get the join button to appear, you'll need to invite the room. Once that's done and your meeting's ready to start, you'll walk into the room, 
touch the screen and you'll be able to see that there's a join button. Tap the join button. So now you're connected and you're ready for a call. Okay, so now we covered joining a meeting using the join button, and that's if you book the room like we talked about as a resource. So what happens if you booked a room, but other people are in there unexpectedly? Got some shapes, get it right up in my space and shake it. Just shake it. So the room you were trying to get into was occupied, and that's the one that you booked. That happens in a lot of organizations. No problem. You can go to another room, hit call, dial your SIP URI, and you are still in the meeting. So the room that you're joining from wasn't invited to the meeting, so the join button doesn't appear. You have two options here. You can press the call button and dial the SIP URI, or you can press the join WebEx button, enter the meeting ID, and click join. I'm going to choose to select the WebEx join button. Once in that menu, I'm going to select the top and I'm going to enter in my WebEx meeting ID. Once I've completely entered the meeting ID, I'm going to click the join button. Once connected to the meeting, it's going to prompt me to enter my PIN if I'm the host and I have an option to hit yes or no. I'm going to hit yes and then I'm going to enter my PIN. Once I've completely entered my pen, it's going to start the WebEx personal room. And I'm going to be in the meeting and ready for participants to join. We covered a lot today. We covered the preferences of the WebEx portal. We covered scheduling a meeting. We covered ways you can join the meeting. If we said anything in this video that you're like, hey, I'd love to know more about that, leave a comment. Make sure you like and subscribe so you get all of our content. And if you are not a WebEx subscriber or a WebEx user, you can contact Looking Point and we can help you out with that. See ya!